Hi, my name is Gary Crabb. I'm the owner of Enlightened Images Photography. I'm a professional landscape and travel photographer based here in California. I'm speaking to you today from my cozy little office in the San Francisco Bay Area. For those of you that don't know me, I've been a photographer for oh the last 15 years or so. I've done seven books on California and I ran a stock agency for a National Geographic photographer throughout the 1990s. My latest book, Photograph in California Volume 1 North, came out this last year. And now that I'm done with that book, I've made a New Year's resolution to teach myself something new, and that was video. One of the things I thought I would try is a video blog post, so forgive me if things are rough around the edges, but this is the first time I'm just kind of putting myself out there, and hopefully people enjoy that. What I wanted to speak to you today about was a pair of experiences that I had, and it revolves around the essence of how we think landscape and nature photography should be versus the way it sometimes is and earlier this year I was in Death Valley with some friends of mine that were teaching a photo workshop and one morning they brought their class up to Zabriskie Point and there lo and behold uh, well before sunrise there was a line of 20 some odd photographers with a workshop group or two that had spread out beyond the lookout area and were down in front standing between everyone that was up above and the pretty scenery that was in front of them so uh, my friends their class if they wanted to get an unobstructed view they actually needed to go down and join the line of these early photographers that were standing down below in front of everyone else in order to get an unobstructed shot and it really kind of pinpointed this feeling that sometimes these great landscape icon shots are just this kind of crowded circus like location where people just have to jam in like sardines and there's a competitive spirit to get there first. Uh, I even experienced this myself more than a decade ago in the Grand Tetons at the Snake River Overlook where tripod legs were locked, inter interlocked to the point where when there was some great light happening behind me, I actually had to go under my tripod to spin my camera around, photograph what was behind me, climb back under my tripod, and then spin my camera back out towards the mountains in front of me. And that feeling of just being kind of part of a lined-in wall just felt so contrary to what we think outdoor nature and landscape should be, which is a connection between just an individual and the great solitude and grandeur of nature and how that flies in the face. I, I've seen these same kind of lines. I hear them happening uh, at Zion National Park at the bridge. It, I've seen it happen at uh, Mesa Arch in Canyonlands National Park. I've even heard people yelling, hey, get out of my shot at places like Delicate Arch and the same thing at Maroon Bells in Colorado. And it's just the antithesis of what we think nature's photography should be. Then later this year in July, I was traveling through some of the national parks of the American West with my family, and I came across this one moment that was in such contrast to what I experienced earlier, I just had to whip out my cell phone and record the moment for posterity, and I want to share that with you now, so take a look. Well, there's a lot of talk about how some icon shots become like a sporting event in photography and I have personally been part of that I mean it's it's disgusting when you have to lock up tripod leg to tripod leg to get a shot of some place like the Oxbow Bend in Grand Teton and such is the case but I gotta tell you I am here on a summer morning in Glacier National Park at as you can see behind me a picture postcard view and I've got my camera set up over there and just waiting for sunrise happening and you know what let's take a look around there's the lodge at many glacier and glacier national park totally full and yet there is no one on this lake shore 
at all. <laughs> Save for one person walking outside the lodge that I see right now. So, um, it's not always a competition. And frankly, this is one of those moments when I gotta say, I mean, look at this. As it stands right now, I, I, even though I'm next to a major hotel, I'm all alone. Can't beat that. This is what it's about. So as you can see, I mean, that is a case of really how it's how it should be. I mean, that that personal connection between us as a photographer and nature without these crowds or this kind of circus like atmosphere of needing to be there and, you know, uh, compete for who's going to get the best spot or how early can you get there uh, and and. I, you know, busloads of tourists or other photographers showing up to try and just get into this zone of, I, I've got to get this shot. If you haven't experienced some of these great icons before, you know, it's all right. You join in the line, you get your shot once, but I can tell you as a professional, it is so much more rewarding when after you've got that shot, you can just move on and not worry about the crowds and focus in on bringing home your own personal vision and if you see some of these crowds like i've seen at five in the morning at oxbow bend just drive somewhere else hike somewhere else turn the other direction and find something that will be uniquely yours it's really possible and it really is one of the best rewards for being out there is when you can come home with something that is unique to you and your own personal vision Thanks for watching and have a great day.